Welcome to this video overview of working with reports in SureTax. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to view and create reports. After logging into SureTax and selecting the business you want to work with, you can reach reports by using the menu. On the report screen we can see that there are both interactive and downloadable reports. The downloadable reports are from what you had in the old system, while the interactive reports are a new feature that will be expanded in the future. Once a quarter we will be adding more of these, and eventually you will be able to create custom reports for an additional fee. Currently however, these are the interactive reports that we have available. Let's take a look at the State Reconciliation Report. This report shows you data in a graph format that you can modify by making selections about where to focus. This data is pulled from the same sources as the standard reports that we saw on the previous screen, but the interactive part is that you can change the parameters of what to display. Right now we're seeing revenue and tax from December of 2019 through June of 2020. But let's try narrowing this report to show gross sales, total exempt sales, net sales, and gross tax just for April of 2020. Our data in the chart has been modified to display only that information, as indicated by the fact that April 2020 is highlighted in the list below. We can also see that the chart has been modified to show figures for three states, Texas, Georgia, and Missouri, because those are the only states that have sales information for this month and this year. We can drill down to look at one of those states specifically. Let's have a look at Georgia. Clicking on Georgia narrows the chart at the top to display revenue and tax for that specific state. Within Georgia, we can also choose to drill down based on tax authority type. We have items for both state and county in this case. This updates the chart to show tax and revenue specifically for the county, which is $24,692 in gross sales and $493.84 in gross tax. On the right side here are options for organizing the list at a more granular level. For example, you can expand all of the hierarchy down one level. So in this case, that expands the list to show the taxing authorities for every state, though they are grayed out because the chart is still selected to show the state of Georgia. But I can update it to show a different state and taxing authority by simply clicking it in the list. While the list allows you to select what displays in the chart, the filters allow you to select what displays in both the chart and the list. For example, if you know that you only want to see information for a specific month in a specific year, you can choose that here. We've narrowed to those criteria. Now let's say I only want to see revenue and tax for Texas in April of 2020. Now Texas is the only state displaying in the chart, and the list hierarchy is expanded at the level of Texas. If I choose to filter by tax authority type, say, county, then the hierarchy stops at the county level. In this case, the county of Runnels is the only county level tax authority in Texas for April of 2020. Now, let's look at another interactive report. This time, sales by product. This interactive report shows you the amount of revenue and tax for a given period and location based on product. The chart at the top shows us the total revenue per product group. Mousing over the general merchandise bar gives me a specific amount of revenue for what is displayed in the chart. $100,807 in revenue for general merchandise across all states and all months for the year 2020. Again, we have a detailed list below that we can use to see the data depicted in the chart. Scrolling to the right, we see the total revenue, tax, tax on tax if any, and total tax for each item, and for all items at the bottom. And again, we have filters that can be used to narrow the information. Say for example that I only want to see revenue and tax for computer software. I click the product group drop down and then make my selection. I can select more than one product if I choose, but for now I'll just pick one. This narrows the product group displayed in the chart to computer software and services only, and I can see that currently I only have items in that category for Georgia in March of 2020. Let's return to displaying all product groups and try another filter. 
I'm curious to see what product or products have revenue and taxes for the state of Missouri. For Missouri we see revenue for recycling and e-waste fees for the month of April of 2020, with the total amount of $12,385.38 in taxes. You can also use these sliders in the filter section to narrow the range of total tax or total revenue that you want to display in both the chart and the list. I've narrowed the total tax to an upper limit of a little over $1,500, so we will only see items listed below that level of total tax. The upper and lower limits of revenue can be adjusted in the same way. So these are just a couple of examples of the interactive charts currently available, and you can expect to see more added in the future. Right now, let's have a look at the downloadable reports. As I mentioned before, these are the extracts that are currently being pulled for this business. The headers in this table show you the names of the reports, the status, when they are scheduled to run, and other important information. Right now we're looking at the completed reports, but I can change the list to display reports that have failed or been cancelled. There is only one such report thankfully. I can also click the All button to display both completed and cancelled or failed reports. The Add button at the top of the list allows me to add a new report. Let's try that. This opens the Run a Report dialog. The fields at the top are required, so I'll first select a report to run. Currently the report is set to be based on creation dates only, but I'll change it to rating month, which updates the fields below. Instead of compliance year and month we now have rating year and month. I'll make selections for those. The remainder of the fields are optional and allow me to specify transaction start and end dates, transaction ID, and the format of the report file. I can also choose to set a schedule to run this report if I wish, but for now I will just try running the report. We can see my report now at the top of the list, and its status is marked as in progress. If I click to completed, the status has updated to indicate that the report is now complete. I'll return to the all view to see the full list of reports. These are the downloadable reports, so I'll try clicking the report I just added to download it. I selected a CSV file for the format of this report, and we can see that's the file type that downloaded. This report requested compliance information for the rating month of April 2020, and here we can see items for recycling and e-waste fees and general merchandise in the states of Missouri, New York, and Texas for that rating period. This report looks exactly like the compliance report you would be receiving now, and no action is required from you to keep this report running on the schedule you chose for it. This concludes our tutorial on working with reports in SureAttacks. I hope you found this presentation useful, and will avail yourself of the interactive reports to get customizable information at a glance. Again, we will be adding to the selection of interactive reports in the future, so be sure to check back and see what's available. Thanks for watching our video on managing reports in SureTax.